Yeah, um, yeah, that's fine. Okay. So, um, the class will be quite interactive, which means everybody must participate in the process. It's not just going to be uh, a monologue. It's going to be pretty much like a dialogue. Is that okay? Yes, sir. Why is everybody quiet? Is this how you guys do it? We often are asked to keep our mic muted so that we don't get distracted or disturb others as well. That's why most are okay. muted. Okay, that's fine. But uh, in this case, I know that you might be in noisy areas. So I'm going to advise that you put your mic on. So when I'm talking, I, I know I'm getting feedback from people. Is that okay? Okay. All right. So can. It's fine. All right. Fine. Brilliant then. So quick interaction, just quick introduction rather. My my name is uh, Shokbe. Uh, I I'm not sure. I started radio way back in 2008. My first radio job was with Cool FM in Lagos, and after some few few days and months or whatever, I was transferred from Lagos to to Port Harcourt to come and start Cool FM Port Harcourt and West Zobia Port Harcourt as well. So I became one of the pioneers who kicked up the station in in Cool FM Port Harcourt. After a while, about two years or some few months later. Uh, I went to start up start up another radio in in by Yelsa. Stayed there for some few years. Came back to Port Harcourt, worked at Wave FM, then went back to Lagos to join Inspiration FM Lagos, and then went to Aquibum to kick off Inspiration FM Aquibum. And I left there, and I I left radio. So that's pretty much the journey for me. Uh, so. I'll be talking about uh, a bad habit on the radio. Uh, how many persons, can I just ask a question? Uh, how many persons in this class are currently working uh, with the radio station? Please identify by raising up your hand. No, pretty much just say something. If you're walking, I'd just like to hear. Now I'll be asking you questions. So if you're currently working with the radio station, can I can I can you just uh, let me know? Anybody? I don't think there is any. Okay, none. Brilliant. Uh, how about uh, if anyone has done any form of internship, like uh, what's it called, uh, industrial attachment, with any radio station? Anybody here? All right, so that's a no as well. So you guys are new to the radio. So I'm going to be asking, I'll be calling names and asking questions, if that's okay. Uh, so I'm going to ask Tamara Tonye Dan Asisa, why do you want to join the media? Good morning, sir. Yeah, good morning. Yeah, um, okay, I want to join the media because I've always had the passion to want to um, reach out to people and um, how would I put it? I've always been interested in media actually since I was a child, you know, when we are driving to school, we used to listen to radio. So I, as a child, I just wanted to be one of the voices someday that will be heard on the radio, you know, that will bring joy to people when they listen to me. I don't know if that's- so That makes sense. Yeah, yeah, so let me ask my cookie. Uh, what's the interest? What's what's the inspiration? Why do you want to be, be on the radio? Okay, good morning. Uh, pretty well, radio has um, always, or media has always uh, been my drive. Um, it's, it wasn't my major, but uh, at a point I, I, I developed interest in, in the media. Uh, so I want to be... Um, an investigative journalist with a niche in um, and leadership and politics. Um, a whole lot's been going going wrong. There's a wrong narrative. Um, we have WAP leadership. The youths are being uh, misguided. And uh, so I, I just think that media, it's a platform that um, I, could, I could thrive on and tend to propagate um, the right values um, within that space. So, 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 so your, 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 your motivation is to change the environment, not necessarily because you've got passion for it. Yeah, I have a passion to want to 
to make a positive change, especially within leadership school. Why don't you join politics then? <laughs> well, I I have interest in politics, uh, but not elective uh, positions, and I have friends also in it too. Because it, there's you can effect change using the media, the tool, but if you want to, you know, impact a lot of people and touch lives, I'd say politics is a vehicle for making that happen. I'm just saying, that's just me, but that's fine. Thanks. Uh, lesson, I understand you're the class captain as well. So why, why the interest in radio? All right, thank you, sir, for this opportunity. I, I had an interest in radio because I got this passion of maybe um, like impacting to others through the radio station. That's fine. All right, so a quick one, right? So um, how many minutes do I have to, to do this? I, I'm, not, I'm not sure uh, Sammy mentioned that to me. Yeah, so I think you have like an hour. Oh, that's that's a long one. I mean, a little, I mean, a little work, but that's fine. So very quickly, um, I'm going to talk about the bad habits. I'm asking this question so we can, we can once I'm talking, I'd like for you to ask me questions. You, you've got something to say, Moses? You want to say anything? All right, that's fine. Uh, so what I'm trying to say is, uh, it's going to be quite interactive. You'd ask me questions, feel free to ask questions, uh, interrupt me if you can, that's okay by me. So I'm going to talk about preparedness on the radio. It's a bad habit that a lot of people would uh, frown out in the first place and say, oh, broadcasters should be prepared before they go on the radio. Now, it's going to be a conversation we're going to have together. Uh, if you're not forthcoming with responding to me, I might have to call names, if that's okay. So why do you think, guys, let's make it like a town hall conversation. Why do you think it's important for broadcasters, radio presenters, to, especially radio people, to have show preps and prepare before they go on air, uh, no matter how short or how long the program's going to be? Well, why do you guys think it's important for broadcasters to prepare before they go on the radio? Anybody? All right, so I'm going to start calling names now. I hope you guys will respond. Elvis, a real lay. Good morning. Why? Good morning. Sir. Yes, boss. Why do you think it's important for, for broadcasters to, to prepare before they start the shows? Well, uh, for anything we do in life, you have to be prepared for whatever you do. And, um, for any, uh, and that applies to broadcasters. For them to be on radio or whatever, they have to be prepared and um, pro uh, like provide a very good show to their audience and um, give them what they want. So what happens when you don't have time to prepare for a show? That means you shouldn't do the show. Is that what you're saying? Well, it depends on your experience level on it. And if you don't have time to prepare for the show, I believe you just have to like flow and um, maybe let the experience that you've had before guide you. Hello? Yeah, I can hear you. I'm just trying to process I said what you're saying. Just, okay, I said you can just let the, um, depends on the experience the person has in radio broadcasting or media, uh, media. Uh, if you don't have time to prepare then whatever experience you've had before, you just come on and then let it guide you uh, while you, like, you just like an interactive session with your audience. So, so what you do is you use the audience to do the show, like what people oftentimes would, would accuse uh, broadcasters of doing, just come and open the phone line, call me, call me. Is that what you're asking them to do? Yeah, you can just... Maybe think of something from your everyday life and then like try and uh, interact with the audience on that. Thank you, Elvis. Thanks. Uh, let's, uh, why are you Adobe Doris? I hope I got the name correctly. Good morning. Yes, sir. Good morning, uh, sir. Nice. So what, why do you think it's important for, for broadcasters to, to be prepared before they go on the radio? I think it's important for a broadcaster to prepare before he or she goes um, life because 
to prevent blabbing, yeah, to prevent um, stuttering, and also preparing gives you more confidence to deliver a show appropriately. So to prevent stuttering, so you think stuttering is an entirely bad thing to, to happen to a broadcaster? Is that what you think? Um, in a way, it's not nice. It's not nice to stutter while you're presenting. And I feel like when you're prepared, um, you eliminate that aspect of stuttering, the possibilities and all. So let's assume you want to present, you have a speech band that lasts for about five minutes. You, you guys know what a speech band is, right? The length of time you talk uh, during what you call a mic break. So are you going to write down everything you're going to be saying. Is that what you're going to do as a broadcaster? Write every word down? No, sir, definitely not. Writing the points down will serve as a guide to delivering an excellent show, sir. Interesting. Let's get Coyote, five with me. Uh, let's, let's get your take on this one. What do you think? Do you think it's really important for, or how important is it for broadcasters to be prepared before they go on the radio or the television? Okay, good morning now. Good morning, sir. Um, it's very, very important for one to prepare. Um, preparation is like planning. And mm -hmm. they were saying that um, if you fail to plan, you're planning to fail. Uh, if one doesn't prepare for his show, there's a huge possibility that um, that show may not be as smooth as uh, it has been. Take, for instance, one who anchors a particular show and everyone is always listening in. The person is, um, doesn't get his facts right, doesn't prepare for the show properly that day. And the audience or the listener out there would know that there's something wrong, I guess. So I'm gonna be asking, I, I don't wanna call names again. So I'd like, I'd like for us to join because you guys are gonna be talking for a living. So don't be shy about expressing yourself. And there's nothing like a wrong view here. We're talking about these things together. Thank you, Coyote. Uh, quick one. So what happens about being spontaneous? What do you guys think about being spontaneous as a broadcaster? I don't want to call names, just, just joining conversation. What happens when you're called upon and you've got like prior knowledge that you're going to do the show? Does that mean you tell your boss that, no, I can't do it. I'm not prepared for this one. Is that what that means? Guys, talk freely. Okay, let me express an opinion here um, as regards this question. So um, spontaneity, it's, for me, it shows, it brings out your, your through personality. Um, it shows if you have depth um, in your profession. Uh, so um, most times anything could happen your co-presenter may not show up and um, you could just be called upon um, to come right the way at the moment so how prepared are you on and off the show will also come to play when you are when you are, you are called upon so um, i think it speaks more on your depth your level of depth as as a presenter how voracious, how knowledgeable you are about, you know, uh, your subjects. So mm -hmm. there's nothing wrong about that. So that's my opinion. Right. Thanks, Mike. Any other person? All right, just to say, uh, so quick one. I, I had a chat with Sammy yesterday about the same thing. And, and one thing Sammy told me, I've known Sammy for a while now, was that some of his best shows were the shows he didn't prepare for where he had to stumble into the studio and then just just go on. And I've, I've been on the radio on and off. I've been on the radio on for 13 years, you know, looking back now. And truth be told, I have a bad habit of not always preparing for shows personally. I said, it's, it's a bad habit, which means if, if you're joining a profession new, you've been encouraged not to, not to do that. But that's, that's what I do really. And Mike, I think it is, said depth. Now that drives home the point I'm trying to make. If you don't like reading, if you don't enjoy consuming information like your life depends on it, you're probably not in the right place. 
because as a broadcaster, you got you must have an idea pretty much about everything. That's one. Two. The best shows I have done as a broadcaster, I was doing the morning radio. I did that in Port Harcourt. I did that at pretty much in Lagos and and you as well, is that some of the shows I do, I really write stuff about. So preparation to me means you have to be knowledgeable. So what I do most, I don't have the paper down or anything like that. And my former bosses would frown at me. But when I'm done with the show, they oftentimes say, wow, that was great. So it became a bad habit that people who were on the studying learned something bad because a lot of them would think I'm just being rude about it. And I think I was really. So I'll just waltz into the studio in the morning or whatever time I'm doing the show and just go on. But whilst I'm going on on the radio, what I do is, so I don't act like I know it all, is I do more research on the show myself when I'm talking. I just type and stuff and just read a bit, double check my facts. But why am I able to do that? Because I consume information. I read because I read because I realized that to show depth, because you'd rather listen to someone who's got loads of information. And ladies and gentlemen, the job is about releasing, downloading, telling people what is happening and how well you know about things happening around you that happened in the past that is happening now. Is, the, is based on the level of knowledge you know. And which means if you want to be a broadcaster, every book, every journal, every article must be pleasing to you. And that's the truth. Because, except, you've, except you want to do sports, for example, which means you must read every information you see or you hear about sports. I like, I, I did sports on the radio. I did, I do politics a lot. I did music as well, which therefore means I would consume any information that came my way in any form. I double check facts because I don't want to go on the radio and tell people what is not. I do not want to be a carrier of false information. Far from it. Which is why a lot of times when I'm on the radio and I want to say something, you have to be very quick about this one as well, is I double check my facts. Now, it's awesome. It's, it's wonderful for you to prepare for your shows, but I don't prepare for my shows like that. I have a word we are preparing. I have an idea, top of my head, what I am going to talk about. But when I get on the radio, it's something new. There's always, and I'm not saying the phone line kind of conversation where you say, uh, what kind of food do you like to cook the most? Rice or beans, call me up. And this is a number. That's that's lazy radio. That's not what I am talking about. I'm saying you're going on the show, you've got facts about what happened in Nigeria in the like 70s, what's going to happen, what happened in 83, what happened in 93. And then you can roll out the facts at every point in time with details. And remember, folks, the beauty about radio is painting pictures with words. It's called the blind media, right? So therefore. Your words will paint the pictures for people. So your storytelling abilities must be top notch. You must learn to tell stories. What makes a good show is one content, two delivery. So it's not so, see. So it's it is enough to know what you want to talk about. But then again, how do you deliver the stories? So here are some techniques I would use. There's something called how many of us have heard a phrase prestige pause? Anybody? Just say yes if you have. Anybody who's heard a phrase prestige pause? So I think that's a no. It means when you're saying something important, you stop at the middle of it for effect. So I'll give an example here. I'm, I'm on the radio and I'm saying, are we all mad? Then you keep quiet for like five seconds. So make people think about the statement. And then you say, you go straight to what you're going to say next. So example is, are we all going mad in Nigeria? I think we're going mad, really. Because if you check out what happened in the country the last few days, where there's a story in the, in the, on the internet where we heard a lady was sleeping with a dog. 
and people being kidnapped on a daily basis. Now you must understand how you deliver the content. If, if regardless of how wonderful a content is, how you deliver the content is what makes more sense. Techniques like reinforced hearing, prestige pause, asking the same question twice. For example, have we all gone mad? Have we all gone mad in this country? You're driving home a point. Remember the job. See, the first thing that catches a listener, regardless of your content, is the first words you spill out of your mouth on the radio. I don't know. I, I think I'm not a T, I'm not a TV guy, so I'm more of a radio person, so that would make sense. So if I were to do a show, for example, and I have Wisdom Yellowy we were supposed to be on the belt or on the shift, let's say it's a morning show. And we some called in sick, uh, let's say by 1 a.m. in the morning. And I got a text as early as 4 a.m. from my boss and say, hey, you have to fill in the shift. Wisdom can't make it. You have to go on the radio. How prepared can you be at 4 a.m. in the morning, ladies and gentlemen? It's okay to write your script. It's okay to have things lined up the way you plan them to be on the show. That's, that's fine. But I'm saying, right, guys, that you must be prepared for the days you don't have time to prepare for the shows. And most times, more often than not, that's the substance of who you really are. If you have to always prepare for your shows, what happens when you lose the script or something happened? Does that mean you're going to go blank and the show will fail? Absolutely not. People's livelihood, and I explain that later on, people's livelihood, people's mood, people's uh, joy depends on you having a great show. So livelihood would mean we've got people who have paid for commercials, live appearances, hypes, commercials on your belt. So if your show is crappy, for example, how do you keep listeners to listen to the appearance of somebody who's coming to advertise on your belt? Because you've lost the listenership already. That's livelihood. People's joy. They hear your voice on the radio. They look forward to hearing you again. You're back on the radio and it's joy for them. And you, you, you're cracking on. Mood. You play the right music. You have the right words to say. The attitude is correct and nice. I'm here to damage the thought that says you have to always prepare. That's bonkers. You don't always have to prepare for your shows. That's what I think, really. My views, highly subjective, ladies and gentlemen, but then perhaps effective as well, because it has worked for me. I've been off the radio for about a year now. I'm prostituting somewhere else, but that's fine. And the skills I learned on the radio have also been instrumental and instructive in my new found profession as well, because I learned how to communicate on the radio and those skills became in handy, how to talk to people, how to use the right words. And I'm working in a very different environment away from the public space. My, my workspace now is very enclosed. I work with about a few people. But how do I communicate effect? Do I also have to prepare for them as well? What I'm trying to say is you must have content. And how do you, how do you have content? You have to consume information. There's a scripture that says, faith comes by hearing. And don't limit hearing to just words. You read as well, that's hearing. If you don't enjoy reading as a habit, you can't do well on the radio as a person. And that's the truth. You cannot. It's okay to have a good voice. It's okay to sound well. It's okay to have a style of delivering and using the big words and the small ones. But ladies and gentlemen, if you haven't got content up here to deliver to people, no one would listen to you.
So you have to hear stuff. You have to read as much as you can. I saw something on Twitter yesterday. A guy was advising people to read uh, 15 pages of books, or 15 pages every single day. Just imagine that if you can consume as much as that on, on a daily basis, just, just read. Read about funny things, about countries, continents. Read about precedents, cultures, food. Read about gender equality. Read about things that don't make sense, about genetically uh, you know, manufactured uh, food, GMO foods. Read about wet topics, bestiality, for example. Read about politics, the House of Commons, the House of Lords. Read about countries like uh, Sao Tome and Principe, St. Kate's and Navies. Just read about everything. So I'm going to ask you a question, people. Who would you rather listen to? A person who's got a great voice, but with little content, or someone who's got content who you can learn from, but just got, has got an average voice? Who would you rather choose? Are you still there, people? Yeah, definitely the person with okay. the So my take is content is everything at least 80% of it all. So, for example, one of the best female uh, co-hosts I ever had on the radio is, has a background in, I think, sciences or something like that. But, oh my goodness, isn't she intelligent? She's wonderfully intelligent. And she hasn't got a great voice. Her voice is, if you ask me, a voice isn't, it's not good. For, it's not fit for radio at first. I, I had my reservations. Well, boy, I can't play with that knowledge, man. She's got something. I mean, on every topic, regardless. I I learned a lot from her saying on the radio. Once you say something, I don't know. I'm going back to Google to check it out and read more facts about that as well. So what I'm trying to say is, guys, preparation sounds good, but you can't always have the chance to prepare for your shows. On a day you fail to prepare, what delivers you that day is what you know, your content. You have to read. And reading, I understand, is hard work. It's hard, if, especially if you're not used to reading in the first place. It's, 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 it's a daunting task, that much I know. But if you want to do radio or do media, you must love reading. I mean, learn to love it. It's going to take time. And something I read some few, I think I heard some some few years back was if you can keep a habit for 21 days or you can this a habit for 21 days, you've done it successfully. What that means is if you can make a habit of reading 20 pages of books, whatever topic it is, for 21 days consecutively, it's going to be a habit, a part of your life. repetition reinforcement and you'd be amazed how intelligent you sound when you read and the only way one of the very few ways to conquer repetitive words on the radio and stuttering like one of our colleagues here said is to have got content you are a reservoir of information Facts now, not made up stories. Or facts. So I'm going to ask the question. Uh, we need to be as, as open as possible and pretty much free about this one as well. Is do we really enjoy reading that much? Let's be, and if you don't like that reading or you have other styles or other ways of, of consuming information and can all learn from you as well, that's fine. So if, if you don't like reading as a means of gathering information, what do you like to do? Anybody? Um, good morning, sir. You said, you said good morning before, so just go on. Oh, okay. Uh, I don't really like reading. Although I read, I would rather watch documentaries or maybe I'm scrolling through on my phone and I see a short article, I read that. But I prefer to watch documentaries and 
sometimes listen to audio and books. It helps me. That's since that's I'm not right. a reader. Do you, do you do you assimilate as more information uh, as you ought to do uh, compared to reading as well? Do you, do you, do you, so what do you what, what let, let's let's talk just you and I right so we can just talk about stuff. What okay. what subject do you fancy the most? Um, what do you watch? I watch I like to watch um, crime documentaries and documentaries on history or documentaries on like interesting facts. So choose just, a topic and choose a topic uh, about history. Let, let's talk about it together. Oh, uh, <laughs> um, I'm quite a bit off guard right now, so I don't, I don't really know what to say. You are but not prepared, if, are you? Right? No, I'm not. I'm not prepared. That's the point. That's that's what I'm trying to say. You don't always have to be prepared. Do you get? Does it make sense to you now? Yes, yeah. I do. Yeah. Yes. If you have to wait for the time, because the day the opportunity comes for you to showcase your talent and what you've got, you don't, it, it comes unannounced most times. So if you're waiting for a particular day to be prepared, oh man, you're going to be missing a lot. Any other person who doesn't like to read, who likes to consume, thanks. My, my sister, thank you so much for, for volunteering that information. Any other person you don't like to read or you like to consume info through another means, feel free to speak, please. Yeah, it's not that I don't like to read, but for situation I find myself now, I don't have much time to read a book, so I consume audio books and I listen to a lot of um, podcasts. Also, you do podcasts a lot. So, and also, I find time to watch documentaries on YouTube. Yeah, I do podcasts. I listen to Joe Rogan a lot, uh, Megan Kelly, and uh, oh, brilliant. So, what topic do you fancy the most? Uh, I listen to virtually anything. I love history a lot. Um, I football. I'm, I, football I love football. So, anything I just listen to it. Also, I'm also following the Johnny Depp court case. So. So that makes sense. So, so my question again, let me just rephrase in case uh, you didn't hear me correctly, was what, okay. what, 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 what do you like to spend time watching or listening to? There has to be some aspect of life that really- Football. Catches your fancy. Football. 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 Okay. So, uh, so let's talk about football then, just you and I, is that okay? Okay, it's fine. All right, so cool. Uh, we, there's a World Cup happening in Qatar later in the year, uh, and there's stories about human rights abuse as well, the word construct on the stadium or the stadia as a case is. What's your thoughts on that? Well, um, FIFA knew what they were doing when they awarded the prize to Qatar and um, the Qatari government has tried to push the story down. And um, I have heard they've tried compensating some of the workers. So the human rights abuses are well known and uh, everyone knows the cases that Qatar has, but still at the what cup was given to them. So I don't think there's much we can do on that. Well, do you think if, if we put that in context, does it make sense that you want to host the entire world on the foundation of what is faulty? Does that even make any moral sense? It doesn't make any moral sense, but it's not the first time they've been doing that. They also gave it to Russia. It has happened a lot of times. So I think it's just about the money. And you can see after those World Cups we are awarded, they were taken to court and then um, the two officials, the two top ranking FIFA officials that got those um, um, World Cup awarded to Qatar and Russia, they've been having court cases and I think they went to jail for some time. So, and the, uh, the World Cup is already awarded to them. So there's not much we can do about it, but morally it's not right. And hopefully the World Cup uh, in November, December, wouldn't that have some effect on how the World Timetable League will be structured? Yeah, uh, yeah, they've already kind of restructured it in a way where it won't really affect teams. So in November, there'll be a break, like, like kind of the usual winter break that most leagues do have, except the English Premier League. But now it's going to be much longer to accommodate the World Cup. So it's just a way of like, it's, uh, they play the season to a halfway point, and then they go on their winter break, which then they have the World Cup, and then they come back and complete the second half of the season by 
the um, Zoom. Uh, okay, that's fine. Uh, apparently, your your network is, is acting up. Well, I'm, I'm oh. trying to. What well, that's, that's fine. Uh, no, no, no worries. Well, wonderful, wonderful conversation you and I had this morning. But the the path where I think you might have to walk on is with the facts. So when you said some okay. years, some years is is a vague statement. Some years, sorry, please. Can I... it's, 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 it's that the people who were convicted for the human rights abuses or something like people officials had to spend some years in jail. So what I'm trying, what I'm trying to reinforce is, harm yourself with the facts. Yeah. Okay. Specifics. Uh, so, so, well, thank you very much. It was a good banter. I really enjoyed it. So that underscores my point, really, ladies and gentlemen, that you can't always have time to prepare for your shows, and the best way to be prepared is beforehand. Read. Whichever way you consume information, fine. Podcast, audiobooks. I'm not here to come and say this is the best method. Just choose what works for you. If, regardless of the topic, he wants to do sports, perhaps I guess, and of course, sports is uh, an interesting arm of journalism as well. So you might want to focus on that. That's fine. That's good. But regardless of what your interest is, you must read stuff. You must consume as much as you can in terms of information, be current, listen to the boring news. I understand news is boring, it's repetitive as well. They're talking about Ukraine all the time. They're talking about Donbass and Donetsk and all the stories, but you have to keep listening to them if you want to do well on your job because the day the chance comes for you to showcase what you've got, you might not be quote enough quote now, the word is prepared. That's the way to avoid a pit hole. All right, so I think that pretty much tells my story. Feel free to ask me any question about the job, the success, the failures, the bad, the good, and the ugly. I'll answer you, and let's just talk. I like it when it's more interactive. That way, I know you're connecting, you're listening, you're following, and you understand what I'm saying because I don't just want to be talking to myself. All right, guys, any questions? Let's go. Yeah, feel free, please. Mr. Delight, Ogbonne. Yeah, I really appreciate your time and especially how you straight and nail the point you're trying to make. I really appreciate that. And I got your point outrightly. Now, my question is this. Your challenge is there are there are, but where I'm concerned, how were you able to handle your challenges that you grew up to a point that you no longer see them as an obstacle, but as a stepping stone in your path to your profession? So when you say challenges, there are quite a lot of them. So you might want to be specific. <laughs> I went through a lot, man. <laughs> well, I that's why I didn't, that's why I didn't specific. I wasn't like I wasn't specific in you enumerating them but how they you can pick any of them though and i like right. how so, so I'll, I'll just talk about the ones uh when i started at first uh, i started as a neophyte i had no idea i think god god i don't think i know that god was wonderful to me i got my first radio job ever was with cool fm in lagos so i had a chance to work with the, the best guys the dan foster's your listeners of, of this world and i was humble because I, I needed to learn. I knew I knew nothing. I knew where I was. So one of the first things I did, I did when I joined the place was to be humble. And secondly, you must learn to interact with people. You must learn to communicate. If you don't know how to talk, things will not go your way. And I'm gonna tell you guys this, when decisions that will affect your destiny are taken, you're never there. How do decisions you that will when decisions that will affect your life are taken, yeah. get him off the get get him off the show, get him on the show, increase the salary, decrease the salary, sack okay. him, employ him. Okay. Those are decisions that will affect your destiny. So when you get your first job, be kind to people. Be kind because there's there's an ego that broadcasters oftentimes would have. They make, that makes them think they're better than everybody because they hear your voice on the radio. So you're rude to the cleaners, you're rude to the driver, you're rude to the 
marketers, you don't know how to talk to people because you're now on the radio, so your shoulders are high. Be kind to people. You'd be amazed what the cleaner can do for you. You'd be, just be kind, be courteous, greet people, say good morning. <laughs> There's no, there's no magic anywhere that would, it's how you treat people that it makes your life go forward, regardless of the profession. Be kind. My challenge is what I, and, and just so you know, the person I married today was the first person that said good morning to me when I joined Kula FM way back in 2008. That's my wife that I'm married to. She's kind. She was. A, she's a kind person. Be kind to people, regardless. You guys will get your jobs on the radio, and you'd be amazed how how broadcasters always act and talk because you're you're having a great show. People are calling your name, and that's an excuse to be obnoxious. Don't be that person. So when they mention your name, because like I said earlier on, when decisions that affect your destiny are taken, you're never going to be there. Often more than often more, you would never be there. Should we employ delight? Nah, he's not a nice guy. Should we employ, should we fire delight? No, please don't. There's something it's doing for us. It might, so my the person who gave me my first shot on the radio oftentimes would say something. He said, he said, give me a person with an average ability, but with a wonderful character over a genius who is a dick. So on what I learned early, because I came, I'm, I'm a Yoruba guy, so I learned to be, to be respectful. <laughs> so I, I learned that earlier. So I should respect the people who are ahead of me. I didn't, I was willing to learn everything. I'd say, well, what I also, I also, I also respected myself. So they don't send me recharge cards and that's not a private thing, but you're a broadcaster. So I was way younger when I joined then. But I, 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 I should respect the people. And I'm not always quick to voice my opinion because I didn't know anything in the first place. At least I didn't when I joined then. And I realized that kindness, and remember that wherever you're working now, it's just a phase, it's a pass. It's a passage to the next place. So treat people there nicely, be kind. Don't feel like you're on the radio now because that, trust me, man, the feeling would come that or people like me, wow, that hearing my voice on the radio, you're hearing yourself sometimes, you're feeling cool. And then that draws into your head. So th those challenges was because I think yeah, every, you go to work every day, just like you, you meet people, just be kind regardless. I hope that answers your question, Delight. Yeah, very well, very well, I really appreciate it. Thanks a lot. All right, let's go guys. Got some uh, 15 or 10 minutes more. Any questions? So I am perhaps taking that as a no. No, as... my, my, my hand is up, so I'm sorry. Oh, sorry, I can't, I can't say it, sorry. Yeah, okay. Okay, so I, let me say thank you again for the lecture, it was quite inspiring. Um, you shut out my, my philosophy. I, when they dropped the topic, you were coming to speak on the unpreparedness on the radio. Um, I was, I was um, looking to tick the box. Uh, however, you've, you've really uh, sh shaken the tables here. So I have a question around organizational structure. Mm -hmm. So you are in an organization where um, show prep is is a must for for every presenter before he goes on the show. So how do you you know really handle that um, for institutions that insist that um, you must have your show prep before coming on board the show? So how does that work, sir? All right, fair enough. Because. Uh... Our fathers don't own radio. Don't own radio station. My father didn't own one, for example. So what that means is I must abide by the rules of the organization. You don't want to be the rude guy, uh, saying no to the bosses. So if if where you walk are insisting on a show prep, give them a prep. 
Mm. But the, the that but it just reinforces my point is and perhaps one time I just one line and just say I'll talk about the president today uh, from nine fifteen to nine. I think I had that issue as well when I was like cool, and I'm sorry I was when I became you know a lot more experienced. I was I was not the prep guy, and I was now heading a department which my GM frowned at. I'm not because I I I thought that people it's a creative environment. Don't stifle them. But I was also pretty sure that the presenters were were experienced people. I wouldn't do that with somebody who's just starting uh, on the job. I would require to see what they're going to talk about for quality sake. So, so if you, if you walk in a place that require prep, please give them the prep. But load yourself with contents. Deliver more than you have on your prep. All right. Well said, sir. Thank you. Uh, Justin, to do a follow up to that while you were speaking, uh, I think you you mentioned um, some powerful nuggets and trying to um, hold your your listeners. Uh, you talked about um, the prestigious pause. You talked about a double um, reinforcement, asking the question twice. I, I wouldn't know if um, there are more to that or it's just that two that you mentioned on the top of my head i remember the two uh, those are the things i often do on the radio from that's, that's what i can remember perhaps there were all the techniques that i used well i can't remember that now but the the prestige pause will always work because you wouldn't feel it because you're the one saying well people at home will feel it or people listening from wherever they are listening to will feel it more than you would you know right. and Yes, because it looks it look ordinary to you doing it like you did, you did nothing. Don't worry about that. It's a subtle statement you've made. People at home will feel it more than you would. And repetition as well is quite it's quite uh, effective in asking a question twice. It drives home the importance of the point. Mm -hmm. All right, sir. Thank you so very much. Thank, yeah. thank you, sir. Any other person? Uh, feel free. Uh, if it's on the job, I'd answer you very freely. What uh, about? I'm still at work though, but let's go. Okay, sir. Yeah. Oh, okay. How do you react to negative feedback on radio? Oh yeah, that comes often, just like the positive ones as well. Uh, learn the lessons and move on. You see, guys, everybody can't like you. First of all, get that. Just get that. You know, just prepare your mind for that. No matter how, even if you are Rick Dees or Ryan Seacrest, <laughs> everybody cannot like you. You must understand that, okay? So you also must be wise enough and discerning enough to understand the comments that are coming from a place of malice and envy and the ones that are coming from a place that want you to improve. So you've got someone in your office who never oh, sees right. anything good in what you're doing. That, that's coming from a place of envy most times. But they might have a state, they might have a point uh, they're trying to make. But then again, what that means is if somebody is telling you everything you're doing wrong and never for once, the mentor one right one, uh, so that it doesn't mess up with your mind, just avoid people like that. You know, uh, but secondly, when people praise you as well, don't just move on. Don't don't dwell. Move on. People people will like you. People will hate you. That's just life. And if, if there's something they said, oh, you have issues with your H factor or you have issues with R, okay. What you can do is get the off-air dub, listen, and prepare your own as well. So pr pronounce as many words with R as possible or as many words with H as possible as well so you can learn how to pronounce those words. In those areas, you need to improve. But some criticism are not constructive. They are destructive. My advice is don't internalize those ones. Once they come through the right, push them out to the left. But the ones that are very constructive on how you pronounce words or how you deliver words and things like that, you might want to take those ones seriously. Okay. Thank well, you very much. Thank you, boss. Good morning. Uh, hi, hello. Uh, <laughs> your line is breaking. Okay, I want to ask a question. You were talking about fast. Yeah. Okay. 
I'll try to ask the question about that. Mm -hmm. Because you, you like, you put a lot of light on it. In a bit to gather information, and like, like recently I was trying to look into the Nigerian Biafra conflict, and I read a book from a passenger's perspective, and I'm reading on that one. Your line is breaking, but I understand what you're saying. So you're reading two books from the two, 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 two different writers, and they, they, they present the facts differently. Is that what you're saying? Uh, I can't pronounce your name. I wish I can, but I can do it, Tega. Can you hear me? All right, I'm not sure you can't. But what that, what that means really is the facts are quite subjective then, of course. So when you're relating the stories, just reference who said that thing. It saves you from the pit hole of misinforming the listeners or the viewers as the case might be. So you might say, uh, according to the book by former President Thomas Joe, where he said uh, 50 persons died during the Biafra War, if you put that into account and then you continue right to say, say, say what you're saying. Once you're relating the fact that is like, that you think is quite subjective, always reference where the fact is coming from. It saves you a lot of pitfall when it comes to misinforming people. I hope that answers your question. Excellent one. All right then. All right. Uh, I got one more minute to go. So, any guys, anyone? Yeah, good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, boss. Is that it's right. morning? Um, it? Okay, good morning. Sir. <laughs> yes, sir. Um, good afternoon, sir. My yeah, question yeah. is what are the mistakes made during a radio broadcasting? I'm trying to understand. What do you mean, mistakes? Mr. Wilson, you've got a question, right? Yes, I do. Okay, I think I, I missed the one from Blessing earlier, but let, let, let's have your run. Okay, uh, I've had a few things about temperaments and how they affect the way we approach things or do things as humans. And, you know, not preparing for a show, it's kind of, I just know from the top of my head, like kind of puts you under a certain kind of pressure. Even if you have, or even if you have all the facts that you can gather, not preparing for a show, it puts you under a kind of pressure to deliver for the show and not to let your listeners know that you didn't really prepare for this show. So what if I'm a kind of person that my temperament or my characteristics as a person is doesn't really allow me to work under that type of pressure? How do you think I should approach not preparing for a show? I don't know if you understand me, sir. I do totally. So. You know yourself, right? Yes. That works for what, what, just what, what, what works for you then. So if you All know right. that you can't, you can't function without having, it's about doing the best, you know, having a wonderful show, right? But then again, what happens? You must be prepared for the days you are not prepared. Does that make sense? You're very well, sir. You must, you must make yourself ready for the days you are not prepared for. Because those days will come and those are the days that the person that might liberate your life will be listening to the radio. You won't always, if you're going to do this job, right, you won't always have the chance to have, a, you know, a lot of info and stuff prepared for a show. It won't always be that way. So there are days where you're in prepared for the show, but then you must deliver the show as well. So my point is, don't, don't box yourself in that preparation, hold up and say, no, I must prepare. If I don't prepare, I'll die. No, don't be that guy or that girl. Don't be. Know yourself if it works for you, but prepare for the days that you are not going to be prepared for the show. And that's important as well. I hope that, that helps you. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. And I think Blessing was asking about mistakes. Oh, come on, people. You would make mistakes. Don't dwell on them. You can talk for a little while, but then again, just move on. That's how it works. Are you are you guys in the same place or in, in, in different places? We're in different places. Oh, okay. That makes sense. 
Well, I the think. Uh, my... Oh, okay. You got a question, Adolphus? Okay. I want to say um, when when we talk about entrepreneurs of radio, I guess it doesn't have to happen always. But let's say in a situation whereby I had a conflict the previous day, maybe at home or somewhere else, and then. I'm supposed to give a presentation on the radio. And then what if I don't get to give my 100%, but I still do try? So because of something from home, it affects your, your quality. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Is that what you're saying? Yes. Yeah. Okay, so I'll tell you a story very quickly. I had a boss I worked with one time. I don't know if you guys know him. His name is Femi Shawolu. Femi Sholu has been on the radio for more than 30 years or 40 years. He's retired now. Femi Sholu read the story of his father's death while on the news. Did you hear me well? Mr. Adolphus, are you there? Yes, I do. Mr. Femi Sholu read the news of his own father's death. Yes, I, yes, I can hear you. I Okay, he read the story of his own father's death while he's on the radio, while he did the news. What do you guys think would happen to him then? I think, I basically, I think that would make him so, like, 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 would make him sad. But then again, he's really the news. You can't afford, that's what they call grade A broadcast. You can't afford to be sad when we did the news. You must have your news voice on all the time. What I'm trying to say is, don't let what happens around you affect what happens inside of you and in your head while you're on the job. Get my point? It's going to be hard. Yes, sir. Well, it's, it's, you have to do it. Guys, I've got to bounce. Thank you very much. It's midday. Thank you I very, hope, very much. I hope we all, we all learned a lot, all of us, including me as well. I learned sure, a lot from sure, you guys. Sure. All right, well, sure. thank, you. thank you so much. Well, yeah, have a wonderful sir. day. Yes, ma'am. Please, I have a question. I want to come again with my question. It's 12, but let's do one more minute. Look, very quickly, let's make it quick. I'm at work, but let's go. Okay, please, I was asking, what are the mistakes made while on radio broadcasting? There's a lot of mistakes you make. So... Like I said, I'm going to, uh, major mistakes you make, I don't know, there are, there are lots of mistakes you make, just like life as well. You make mistakes, you say the wrong things, you call the wrong dial, just don't dwell on them, just move on. I hope that answers your question, Blessing. Yes, sir. Give me, give me the wrong, I, I remember one, right? There was there was one time, I think it was Port Harcourt, where a girl, and a caller were put on the radio and the caller called him, the girl asked a question, it's a kiddie show, and said, how many years do you have in a century? So the caller said, oh, 100. The presenter said, no, it's, it's 1,000. Thinking that was a <laughs> millennium. <laughs> so the caller was right and the presenter was wrong. <laughs> that's, that's a massive mistake. Of course, the head of station then berated her and She's, she's, still, she's still on the radio, she's doing well now. That doesn't mean our life would end. You just move on. That's what happens. All right, guys. Thank you very much. It was nice okay, hanging so, out with you today. Sorry, sorry, the last question, the last question, please. All right, make it quick. Okay. Sorry, Lisa, where do you work presently? Uh, okay, I don't work on the radio anymore. I work for a software company. I'm doing IT now. That's, that's pretty much what I do. Okay. I, I left the radio about a year ago, so. All right. Thank you so very much, sir. Um, it's, it's, it's been a wonderful time. We will have to let you go. You're at work. We appreciate this, the, the lecture. And we do hope that um, in the days ahead, we'll make you proud from all that you've taught us. Do have I a wonderful so. day. Yeah. So. Thanks, thanks, guys. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Right. Bye. Yeah. Bye. Yeah. Okay, 